Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Jean-Philippe Rameau's Castore Pollux, which was shown at the Comische Oper Berlin. The conductor was Christopher Moulds, the production was done by Barry Kosky, the assistant director was Felix Zeiler, the set design and costumes were done by Katrin Leatag, the dramaturgy was handled by Ulrich Lenz, the chorus master was David Cavellos, and the lights were handled by Frank Evan. This opera was originally written back in 1737, which included the characters of Minerva and Maus, only for it to be revised 17 years later, which includes the aria of Mercure, and changing a little bit of the plot elements and some of the arias in this opera. What I do seem to notice about this particular opera is that at times, even though the music is very gorgeous and very elegant, there are moments in which I can spot a little bit of filler music, most especially found in the final moments of the opera where I would usually think that the opera would end with Castor and Pollux ascending up to Olympus, but then has the entire opera wrapping up with an aria sung by Telaire, expressing her overall anguish after what has happened. And what I seem to notice is that this opera is also kind of basic in terms of its story, like the fact that we have two brothers, well, twin brothers to be specific, Castor and Pollux, and there are two women that are in love with either of them. So it becomes quite a huge love square. Now, I don't know a great deal of this opera, but I do know a good deal of its composer, Jean-Philippe Rameau. He was a very well-known figure of the Baroque era, aside from the likes of Johann Sebastian Bach, Antonio Vivaldi, Henry Purcell, George Friedrich Handel, and Christoph Willibald Gluck, just to name a few. His operas mainly revolve around mythology, and they basically revolve around love and revolve around a lot of mystical and magical elements, and the ones that were very well-known are the likes of Hippolyte et Arisque and Les Angolantes, just to name a few. With that said, let's get on to what I thought about the production, costumes, singing, conducting, and chorus. The production overall is quite interesting. It starts off with a huge wall made of wood, and we see characters walking back and forth, basically as if though they were in a maze trying to figure out what on earth is going on with their current situations. And we see the opera starting off with Phoebe with her first aria. And after that, we see Telaire. And after Telaire comes Castor. And after him comes Pollux. And I also love the choreography in terms of the fight scene between Castor and Le Cine, and then later on with Pollux versus Le Cine. It's very fluid, very well done, and you could really see just how athletic the Castor and Pollux are at the evening. And also, the costumes were absolutely great as well. I especially love the costumes worn by Telaire and Phoebe. Telaire in the first act wore a lovely pink dress while Phoebe wore something very lusciously green and it looked very lovely on her. And during the scene where Pollux has to venture to the underworld to rescue his own brother, we encounter Telaire and Phoebe dressing up to be crossovers between Samara from the American version of The Ring and the twins of The Shining. I found that rather interesting. What's also outstanding in its own special way were the costumes of the High Priest and Jupiter. The High Priest sort of looked like he was made to be a crossover between Lord Voldemort, Nosferatu, and Edward Scissorhands while Jupiter mainly looked to be like someone who's tall with a trench coat and he was basically wearing a top hat with a small veil covering his face. 
with the chorus members, they wore a lot of white and black and looked absolutely nice as well. So overall, I'm not going to mince words here. The production was pretty interesting and good in its own special way, even though it could have benefited from a lot more scenery, a lot more life in terms of the overall production, but still, it was very decent in its own special way, and it was also well lit to add a little bit of drama and flavor. Now with that said, let's get on to the singers, starting off with our title heroes, the twins, Castor Epulux. Castor was sung by the British tenor, Alan Clayton, and Pollux was sung by the Dutch baritone, Henk Neven. Now, Pollux was basically supposed to be sung by Gunther Papendel, but he withdrew and Henk Neven took over. Let's start off with Alan Clayton as Castor. I really love the sound of his voice. It is absolutely gorgeous, it's scintillating, it's sparkling, and it has such a fine ping that is so associated with a lot of lyric tenors. His technique is of the highest order. His high notes are clarion, his range is homogenous, and his stage presence is very handsome. He was an absolute pro playing the youthfulness of Gastal, and he really did fabulously in this role. And in the role of Pollux, his brother was Henk Neven. My word, what a strong voice and an equally strong stage presence he has. First of all, his voice has a very fine dramatic baritone quality. It's excellent in all the ranges from the low notes to the middle notes to the high notes. He sings everything very effectively and his stage presence was handsome, strong, and almost like a panther on stage. He had the fierceness, the fearlessness, and the absolute charm of a panther stalking the stage and really giving the goods. This guy was an absolute pro. And when it came to Clayton's and Nevain's chemistry as brothers, it was totally believable. We have Nevain who plays Pollux as a no-nonsense, stoic, yet very loyal king. And then we have Castor being more jovial, lively, and kind of rambunctious. So you basically get to see the juxtaposition played well by these two pros, and they did very fabulously. Then we get to the main ladies of the opera, Telaïre and Febe. Starting off with Telaïre, we have the wonderful colorateur soprano, Nicole Chevalier. Nicole Chevalier has been very well known not only in the colorateur soprano repertoire, but some attempts in doing the full lyric soprano repertoire. She's very well known for her homogenous timbre and her overall versatility to whatever role she sings. She's very well known in singing the likes of Constanza, all the four heroines from Tales of Hoffman, Violetta from La Traviata, Lucia di La Mermur, and many other iconic roles for either coloratura or full lyric soprano. And she's very well known for her versatility in both the coloratura soprano repertoire and the full lyric soprano repertoire. She has sung Telayil with such vivacity and such versatility and such charm, I was totally blown away. Her technique was excellent. The notes she sang were absolutely pure gold. And her overall stage presence was overall very charming. She has an athleticism, a charm, and a seductiveness, and an overall beauty which few other sopranos can ever compare to. Her stage presence was of the highest order as she really played Telayire with such charm, vivacity, and such overall beauty. 
Then we have her best friend Phoebe, sung tonight by the wonderful French lyric mezzo Gaëlle Arquette, who was also celebrating her birthday. So, to Mademoiselle Arquette, if you're watching this, think of this review as a birthday gift from me to you. So what did I think of Mademoiselle Arquette is singing as Phoebe? I thought she did fabulously. She was able to give the goods not only vocally, but also dramatically. She has a very wonderful lyric mezzo timbre with her homogenous voice, excellent coloratura technique, and a stage presence which is so fierce and so multidimensional. I was totally engaged in her performance as this BFF of Princess Telaire. She portrays her anguish and her angst very well, all the while maintaining a beautiful and gorgeous timbre to her voice with scintillating coloratura and lots of fine melodies. And then we have the role of Mercure, sung by yet another lyric tenor, in the form of Atso Alexander Bisivich, who has an excellent timbre, excellent high notes, especially evidenced in his fiendish Da Capo Aria, in which he sings to Pollux before his journey to the underworld, and his stage presence was also of the highest order, despite this role being extremely thankless for any light lyric tenor to be portraying this character role. And then we have the High Priest of Jupiter, sung by Nikola Ivanov, who has a very fine timbre and a very fine stage presence, helped by his bass baritone voice, which is so velvety and so fine. And Jupiter, sung tonight by Alexei Antonov. And oh my, what a stage presence he has. He's a very tall gentleman whose stage presence is so commanding, and he doesn't really need to do much in order to convince us that this guy is a very powerful person and has a very powerful presence on stage. His voice has a very Slavic touch to it, mostly due to the tones he produces and the vowels he pronounces. I could really tell it has a very Slavic color to it. But still, his technique is very fine and his timbre is just excellent. And in the silent role of Le Seigneur, we have Etienne Rodin, who acts his role very well with such ferocity that his fight scenes between Castor and Pollux was so well done and so well choreographed. So overall, I'm not going to mince words here. The singing is of the highest order, with a lot of the great singers really handling the coloratura very well and having a lot of great melodies. And as I said before, to the wonderful Gael Arquez, this is one of your finest roles I have seen in one of the longest times ever. And I wish you all the best in what your future engagements have to offer. And the conducting done by Maestro Christopher Moulds was actually quite well done. As you can tell that Baroque music is his specialty and the chorus from the Komische Oper Berlin was absolutely well done. They had a lot of fun really embodying their characters and really singing their hearts out. So overall, I have to say that this particular production of this opera, combined with the excellent singing and combined with the wonderful conducting and chorus, was just absolutely a blast. And if you haven't seen this opera yet, then please go check it out. Well, that's all for now. And to the wonderful Mademoiselle Arquette, I hope you enjoyed this review and kudos to you and your awesome performance. And stay tuned tomorrow where I review Gluck's Orfeo ed Euridice 
at the Staatsopernstelle Theater. So until then, good night, everybody, and hope you all have a great summer.